Okay, welcome to Get That Sound. Today I'm going to be looking at Soul to Soul's classic Back to Life. So here I'm starting with an old break from a hard drive which I've chopped up and sounds pretty similar to the original the way that I've played it in. Um, I've used the pitch shifter here selected to drums mode and uh, detuned it by minus four to get more in the ballpark of the original break that's on the record. So just flip between the two. I've also given a little quantize there to 16B. It's just subtle but gives it a nice little swing. So that's the main break I'm using as the bed there. Next up I'm using a sine wave to make a kick drum. I've used a fairly short decay and short release and copy the pattern from the record. I've used the fat mode as well on the filter. I'm just going to add some uh, compression here. Just a little bit. Bring the threshold down there so we're getting around 4 dBs reduction. Just help to level the kick a little bit so it can stand out in the track. Change the ratio there. 2.6.1 and tweak the attack to let some more of the initial attack through. I also want to keep it under control as well so we've hit on about 5 milliseconds there on the attack a 48 millisecond release just compensated there on the gain for the little reduction in volume due to the compression. I've also added a 909 clap here on the EXS24 Detuned it a little bit to make it sound a little bit fatter. Also use the fat mode to fatten the sound. A little bit of drive there as well. And I've added a noise gate as well just to uh, make it a little bit more punchy. You can see the part there. Just on the twos and the fours. There's the kick drum pattern, just for reference. Shorten that one down a little bit. Next up, I'm using a sine wave for the bass sound as well. That's just the EXS24 default sine wave patch that loads up. There's the pattern of notes. Again, use a bit of compression just to make sure the sine wave is heard on smaller speakers, just to level it out a little bit. Just tweak the ratio. That's sounding pretty good, pretty authentic to the original. Again, I'm just messing with the attack a little bit there, just so it works well with the kick. You can see it's the sine wave, which is the blank patch. And I'm going to add some drive as well, which will also help it cut through on smaller speakers. Switch that on, there we go. Low pass filter, 12 decibel mode, fat mode. And I've had a little bit of a release on the sine wave there, so it just hangs on a little bit. So that's the main bass part. Now I've added a high passed live sounding hi hat on the top end, which you can hear on the record pan to the right hand side. And there's an open hi hat towards the end of the loop as well. I'm just using uh, my audio damage reverence plugin here to add a little bit of reverb. Tweak the pre delay there just to let some of the initial attack through, but make it still sound reverby, make it sit nicely in the mix. <coughs> and I've high passed that as well, taking loads of bass out so it doesn't interfere with any of the other parts going on. So now I've added a conga part, a low conga part, using conga break which I've chopped up here from a live recording. Again I'm compressing it just to level it and so it cuts through nicely and sounds punchy. I've also added a higher conga part on another conga which again you can hear on the original hand off to the right. It's quite subtle but it makes a big difference to the mix and the end result tweaking the attack so there's enough punch. 
Now I'm just changing the output to bus 1 on both the conga parts so that I can send them both to the same reverb. So again I'm going to use my audio damage reverence. Let's tweak the input level there. And the output mix level. Bring the reverb time down a little bit because we don't want it to sound too mushy and the pre-delay can let the attack through. Sounds pretty good. Congas always take well to the re nice reverb. Okay, here's a triangle part, which again you can hear on the record if you listen carefully. Compressed it again to even it out a little bit. High past it and added a little bit of top end there as well. Also layered another snare drum as well just to give more punch to the mid range area to thicken out the clap. This is from a, a drum tracks drum machine. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm using the class AR compression algorithm on Logic's compressor there as well, just to tame the peaks, but still make it sound fat. And I've also added a TR909 closed hat off to the left here, which again you can hear on the record if you listen carefully. Uh, I'm just take, taking a little bit of bass out of there as well, around 500 hertz, do nicely. All these little layers just add to the authenticity of the mix. And if you compare it to the original, it sounds pretty close. I think you'll be happy with the result. Okay, so here's the piano part. It's an approximation of the piano part because it's constantly evolving on the original, but I'm just showing you a loop, basic loop here. So I'm just using the standard uh, stereo ground in the EXS24. Again, high passing it so it doesn't interfere with the all important low end in this track. Using the Reverence plugin again. Pre delay of 22. Tweak the output mix so it sounds clear but not too mushy. But nicely reverbed as well. And I'm just going to compress that as well. A little bit top end there on a high shelf. Of course there's no vocals in here so I'm just EQing it to the track itself but if there was vocals in here I'd probably EQ it a little bit differently. But you can hear that in isolation. And on the main output I'm just putting a limiter just to give us a bit of extra loudness. Glue the track together a little bit. Aiming for about three decibels of reduction there. Snare, triangle, conga break. Live hats, sign bass with a bit of distortion. Kick. And the old break that I chopped off a record. A long time ago. There we have it. 